Skyrim is a game that lets you choose how you want to play, be it a two-handed warrior, a bow-wielding rogue, or a powerful mage who destroys foes with magic. But today I want to see if I can beat Skyrim in a less traditional way. Today I'm going to attempt to complete Skyrim's main quest with nothing but a shield. The rules for this challenge are simple. 1. I can only use the shield to deal damage, no weapons, spells, or shouts that can deal damage except for one instance later on in the game, which I'll mention later. 2. I can use non-damaging shouts if needed, such as Whirlwind, Sprint, and Dragon Rend. And finally, three, no restoration spells, as it would be too easy to just abuse and take away some of the challenge. Any healing potions I get are fair game though. And with that, let's get into it. First things first, gotta make an appropriate character for this run. So I'm thinking Captain America. Good enough. Okay, so the tutorial plays out the same up until when we get our hands freed from our binds by real love. And that's from here where the challenge starts. I grab the armor and weapons from the dead storm cloak. The weapons are just to get some gold when I can sell them later on. Since I have no access to a shield at this point, I basically need to stay behind Railoff until he kills both the Imperial soldiers. I then equip the Imperial Captain's armor as the extra defense of heavy armor is almost a must for this challenge as I'm going to be getting hit a lot with how long it's going to take me to kill most enemies. From here I run down to the next group of soldiers, but more importantly there's an iron shield in this room, meaning I can finally defend myself in more ways than one. That being said, the shield bash is meant to be used to stagger an enemy when they're mid-attack. It's not meant to be used to kill people, and therefore it does basically next to no damage. What makes things even worse is that with only 100 stamina at the moment, I can only bash a few times before I'm out of stamina and have to wait for it to regenerate before I'm allowed to attack again. So, I decide to just run away and avoid what fights I can for now, at least until I'm out of Helgen. Once I find myself out of the tutorial, I decide to go and activate the Warrior Stone as it will cause both my block and heavy armor skills to increase 20% faster. This will come in handy as these will basically be the only two skills that I'll be able to increase and will therefore be my only way to level up and get more stamina. I decided to go up to a nearby mine as I remembered that there is a single bandit outside so I thought it would be a good opportunity to see how long it would actually take to kill a single bandit. It took me just over three minutes. So, with that, I realised that I was going to need a major upgrade to my shield as soon as possible. I made a quick stop in Riverwood and sold everything that I didn't need, then quickly left towards Whiterun, as I had a plan to try and get a lot of block skill incredibly quickly to make the challenge easier. See, there's this glitch slash oversight in Skyrim that if you have a follower who's also a skill trainer, you can pay them for the five levels of training per level, then you can take the money back from their inventory and do this until they can't train you anymore. And as it just so happens that the block trainer in White Run, in Jada, Stone Arm, is also a member of the companions and a potential follower. Long story short, however, I ended up not being able to do this, as it turns out she won't actually become a follower until you finish the companions quest line, and there was no way in hell I was going to do all that just for a single challenge. With that, I was back to square one, but I had one last idea that just might be able to make this a bit easier. I took the cart just outside of Whiterun to Winterhold and from there went north until I got to Septimus' outpost so I could get the lexicon from Septimus and start the quest to go and get the Elder Scroll. Most of you have probably figured out why I'm doing this but for those that don't know, in the same cave where the Elder Scroll is there is a shield called the Targe of the Blooded and what makes the Targe so special is that it does bleed damage over time on top of the initial damage of the shield bash making it miles better than the iron shield that I'm currently holding. Nothing of note actually happened on the walk to the ruin, other than I misjudged a jump and died and then got sent back to Septimus' outpost and had to walk back again. Truly not annoying at all. On the second walk I was able to murder two wolves with my iron shield, which once again just reinforced the idea in my head of how badly I needed an upgrade to my damage. I finally made it to the Dwarven Ruin and from there made my way inside to claim my new shield. Unfortunately, it was a lot more difficult than I'd imagined. See, this area is meant to be explored a lot later in the game when you actually have decent weapons and armor, or any weapons in my case, so it has a lot of enemies that not only kill you incredibly quickly, but also the Falmer, who use frost magic, which is especially annoying as it slows you down and drains your stamina, meaning if I get hit by a single frost spike, I am most certainly dead. It took many many attempts, but eventually I was able to make it to the end where there are two NPCs, Umana and Sulla. Now with my current shield it would be next to impossible to kill Umana and receive the targe, but thankfully the two of them didn't notice me and turned on each other, and luckier still is that Sulla killed Umana outright, meaning I could swoop in and take the targe. As well an almost full set of steel plate, which is a major upgrade to my defence this early in the game. And with that, 
I was able to easily make my way down into Blackreach and from there do an insanely simple puzzle and grab the Elder Scroll for a later part of the story. And just like that, the challenge was back on course. So I headed for Bleak Falls Barrow to test out my new shield and grab the Dragonstone for Farangar. Despite the fact he hasn't even met me yet to send me on this quest. But oh well. I tested my new shield out on the unsuspecting bandits outside of Bleak Falls Barrow and oh, the increase in damage was glorious. <laughs> Now instead of taking 3 minutes to kill one measly bandit, I could defeat one with only 2 bashes thanks to the bleed damage. Now with my newfound bloodlust, I decimated all the bandits out and inside Bleak Falls Barrow with little to no effort. For a brief moment though, I thought I'd hit another roadblock whenever I got to the spider's webs that you usually have to cut through, as after the first shield bash or two, it looked like nothing was happening for some reason. Eventually it worked and I was able to continue right after I gave that giant spider a good bonk. Once the spider was dealt with, I easily carved a path through the rest of the Draugr to the end of the cave, where I then made short work of the Draugr Overlord and retrieved the Dragonstone, which I then took to White Run, but not before returning the claw and having a mild disagreement with looking about the payment. Next, I just continued the story up to the fight with the dragon at the Watchtower. I honestly expect this fight to be harder, seeing how I'm trying to fight a flying dragon with a shield. That said, the White Run Guards did a surprising amount of damage to it until it landed and I was able to stop almost all of its attacks by interrupting it with a shield bash and it died pretty much soon after that. Now however, I was noticing that while I was doing decent damage, my stamina was only letting me do a few bashes before it had to recharge, which was less than ideal. It was at this point though that I remembered about cooking and that you could make vegetable soup which gives the benefits of recovering 1 point of stamina and health per second for 12 minutes. Now while that sounds pretty underwhelming, it should be noted that to do a shield bash in Skyrim you only actually need one point of stamina. So what this means is that once I have eaten some soup, I can then shield bash rapidly non-stop for 12 minutes straight. And spoiler alert, this makes things from here a lot, lot easier. Now I was off to High Hrothgar, but first I wanted to see how effective the soup strat would be on some bandits nearby. And well, I think the footage speaks for itself, it is indeed very effective. Eat your vegetables kids. Anyway, I made it to the Greybeards, passed all of their tests with flying colours, and then went off to grab the horn of Jorgen Windcaller, which was absolutely no trouble at all, as the soup was just letting me mercilessly cut down all the Draugr and spiders on the way there. With that, I got the note in place of the horn, and I was back to Riverwood to speak with the worst character in the game. Once I'm finished begrudgingly talking with Delphine, I agree to go fight the dragon at Kynes Grove with her. When we get there, my brain kind of stopped working for a brief moment. I'm not quite sure what I was trying to accomplish here. Anywho, we fight the dragon and it goes basically the exact same as the last one, as Delphine is easily able to damage it with her arrows. Upon looking back on the footage though, I honestly don't know why I didn't eat some soup and speed this battle along, but I guess my brain was still fried and forgetting how to walk from two minutes earlier. Keeping the pace going, I was off to the Thalmor Embassy, but once more, like an idiot, I forgot to give Malborn my soup to smuggle in with my armour and shield. And because I'm too stubborn to reload a previous save, I decided to chug a bowl of soup before getting on the cart, giving me roughly just under 12 minutes to get through the entirety of the embassy. So, with no time to waste, I immediately grabbed my stuff, dealt with a few Thalmor, then made my way to the courtyard, and was here where things got difficult, as uh, there's no way for me to deal with their magic and they were doing a good bit of damage to me. The next building was where things got really annoying, however. I was not only greeted by more Thalmor, but a Storm Aftermath as well. I died six times here until I got lucky enough for the Conjurer to come out of the room with the Atronach and I was able to kill him and finally proceed. I then grabbed the documents I needed and went to leave but forgot I needed the keys off of the Thalmor that were now holding Malborn hostage. Turns out I am a really bad hostage negotiator as I got Malborn killed almost immediately. Now I was off to Riften and what should have been an easy 5 minute run in and then out of the Ratway Tunnels took me nearly 20 minutes as I completely forgot where in the tunnels I needed to go to find Esbern and kept doubling back on myself for no reason. Eventually I find him, cut my way through even more Thalmor, and with that we made it back to Delphine. With Esbern and Delphine reacquainted while we stand there listening like a silent psychopath it's time to head to Alduin's Wall, didn't want to walk the whole way so it was back to our trusty white run Uber driver to take us to Markarth. On the way I was attacked by two dragons and there was no way I was going to be able to deal with that so I just ignored them and pressed on. Once inside we murdered the Forsworn then proceeded to do a puzzle that was so simple that I solved it by accident. I then donated some blood to the floor, let Esbern read the wall story while Delphine lit some giant candles with her invisible torch. It just works. Now we were in the final stretch and it was back to the Greybeards to learn the Clear Sky Shout which is another shout we have to use to progress the story so I can get to the top of the world where we can meet Parthenax, the best character in the game, 
once again, he won't let us past unless we breathe fire on him, so this is my second instance of having used an offensive shout for story reasons. Anyway, he asked me to get the Elder Scroll so I can travel back in time to learn Dragonrend. However, I blow his dragon mind by informing him I grabbed it about six hours ago at the beginning of the challenge. So I learned Dragonrend, and at this point, Alduin shows up to throw down once again, but thankfully by using the trifecta of soup, Dragon Rand and the Targe, I'm easily able to stunlock him until he decides to run away and end the fight early. After this, I head to Balgriff and ask him if I can trap a dragon in his house. He obviously says no, so I force a temporary peace treaty for the civil war, then ask again, he's all good. Apologies if it sounds like I'm skimming over this part of the story, but setting up the temporary truce between the two factions is no different for this challenge, as it just has me going from point A to point B to point C, talking to people with absolutely zero shield smashing involved. Trapping Odoving is just simply using Dragon Rand and waiting for him to approach me like a fool, and then it's off to the final area of the game. I'll be honest, I was dreading this part because I know it's filled with the rim of Draugr and Dragons, which could easily kill me within seconds if I'm not careful. But lucky for me, a miracle occurred in the form of Skyrim's horrendous physics engine. Right as the dragon landed, as I was fighting two Draugr, I hit him with my shield and he just got propelled away? I'm honestly not sure how this happened, but I'm glad as it did, as it gave me time to deal with the Draugr and get away from the dragon. The inside of the fort presented zero problems with no dragons and much less Draugr, so I was able to speed through until I was back outside where things got more hectic again. I was immediately jumped by the same dragon from earlier along with more Draugr, but this time I was determined to kill him. I took some health potions and another bowl of soup, but I was able to beat the dragon and move on. Except I didn't actually need to fight the dragon and could have just ignored him as I just need to get to the portal, but oh well. I decided to take that advice not more than 5 seconds later as I casually walked past the dragon priest and into the portal of Sovngarde. I navigated the mist without even needing to use the clear skies made my way to the Hall of Valor, right after I showed soon the almighty power of vegetable broth. And now it was time for the final battle with Alduin, which, if we're gonna be honest, was a lot easier than I thought, as he is just like any other dragon, so when I got him down to the grind I was just able to just keep using the soup and shield strat until he eventually bled out due to the amount of bleed damage he was taking. It was incredibly anticlimactic. And with that, I found out, yes, you can indeed complete Skyrim's entire main quest using nothing but a shield as an offensive weapon. All in all, this challenge was a lot of fun. The hardest part of the run is easily the beginning, as any shield that you can get at that point is almost useless in terms of damage, making it kind of mandatory in my opinion to get the targe as soon as possible, but trying to get the targe that early can be a pain with all the high level enemies guarding it. In the end, I finished with a time of about 7 hours, 36 minutes and 28 seconds. Which isn't too bad, honestly, but if I'd went and made the soup at the beginning of the game, as well as a few times where I got lost, mainly in the right way tunnels, I think I could have easily cut it down to just under 7 hours. With all that said, that's going to be it for this challenge video. If you enjoyed the challenge, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel, as it really does help me out a lot. I have ideas for more challenge runs in the near future, so look forward to those. My name's Nerbert, and I'll see you guys later.